Welcome back. Dr. Nondobego Mwangi is a senior lecturer at Sifako Makato Health Sciences University's School of Pharmacy. She is also a researcher at the South African Medical Research Council's Herbal Drugs Research Unit. She's embarking on a journey to help dispel the myths surrounding herbal and traditional medicine. She believes the world is waiting to hear from Africa regarding research done to date about the efficacy of traditional medicines and how they can positively impact the world. Dr. Mwangi joins us to share more information with us. A very good morning to you, Doctor. Thank you very much for your time this morning. The World Health Organization says about 80% of traditional medicine is used, and yet there is still this need, the stigma that's out there, that it needs to be proven scientifically. If so many people believe in traditional medicines, why this, and I don't want to call it a desperation, but why this need that it needs to be proven uh, scientifically? Good morning. I think for traditional medicine to be acceptable, they need to be proven because for us to be able to trade commercially and to comply with the standards of the South African Health Products Regulator, we need to prove that they are indeed efficacious. Because looking at the history, normally the information or the knowledge, the indigenous knowledge based on traditional medicines is uh, passed on from generation to generation, and it is never documented. So in a quest to prove the efficacy, it will be for us to show that these indeed do work. You mentioned you know, this need to now trade it commercially, but there is some reluctance from traditional healers you know, to, for lack of a better word, share their secrets as to how, they, how it is they put traditional medicines together. How then will you bridge that gap between you know, the sciences and traditional medicine understanding that there is this need for it to go commercial? Yes. I think that uh, there needs to be an ongoing conversation because um, in most cases, for traditional healers, this knowledge is based on their livelihoods. So they cannot just give away the information. But in beneficiation and benefit sharing on the indigenous knowledge systems, which is a system that we have in the country, however, it does not involve much in terms of traditional knowledge based on med uh, traditional medicines. So there is a need for um, the legal fraternity as well because there's intellectual property involved to come on board. There is you know, public knowledge that uh, pharmaceutical giants, you know, are, are giants because they, they, they do things the way they do them. Is there no concern, I would imagine, from traditional healers that if medicines traditionally go, you know, commercial, that they will be taken over by these giants and these conglomerates that are already running pharmace the pharmaceutical industry around the world? We have various examples in the country of indigenous knowledge uh, where it became commercialized. For example, the story of Hudia, which became a very big story and it was traded globally without the evidence, the scientific evidence to show that it works. And then um, the product did not make it far because when they did the test later to check for its efficacy, there was no evidence to show that it works for the slimming effects they were claimed. So uh, looking at how the pharmaceutical industry works, there needs to be partnerships because um, product development involves a lot of disciplines. It's not only researchers, pharmacists, and even just traditional healers. So I think that this needs to be an ongoing conversation. Doctor, how far are you and those in the industry in terms of making sure that you get the goal that you're trying to achieve in terms of proving the efficacy and getting you know the knowledge to be expanded at least for traditional healers and those who don't understand traditional medicines I speak of you know pharmaceuticals that deal with Western medicine in terms of legislation our government our former president actually has made a call for all traditional medicines to be regulated so there are some advancements in that space and there's also ongoing research uh, from the medical research council and recently the south african health products regulatory authority has said that um, they are embarking on a quest to have a special body just to look at the traditional medicines focusing on their regulation so they there is some progress in that space. But what are some of the challenges that you found yourselves experiencing? One of them, you have already mentioned them, it's the sharing of the intellectual property with the knowledge holders, which they may be traditional healers or somebody who just knows something about traditional medicines. For instance, now with the 
whole situation of COVID-19. We've seen a lot of people going into uh, the use of Lingana, which is Artemisia, without any evidence that it works and its safety. Now, there's also mention that use of traditional medicines and Western medicine does not, you know, present positive, positive results most times. How then do you help people understand what to use, when to use, and how to use it? There is where the need for um, rigorous science and research methodology comes in because uh, when you look at how the traditional healers practice, they usually use water as a base and then we go into the lab, we start using harsh chemicals, which may be the reason why it doesn't work. When we, so we need to assimilate those conditions so that we can come to the same conclusions because in the lab we tend to isolate compounds, want to work with chemical extracts. So our thinking and um, methodology need to be reframed. And I just want to ask you before I let you go, Doctor, really quickly, I mean, the positives of traditional medicine, some people will be wanting to know that. What sum can you give? South Africa is a beautiful country, culturally diverse, and it's also diverse in terms of its uh, medicinal plants and different uh, cultures who use these plants in various ways. So we are blessed to be in one of the hotspots in the world. So I think that in the green economy, this would be one of the manner in which we position ourselves to trade globally. Dr. Nandobego Mwangi, thank you very much for your time.